how to find private money for real estate investing. You know, this is really a secret uh, that I use, which has allowed me to compete against other buyers and buy property. And if you watch this video to the very end, which you definitely should, I'm going to give you a couple websites where you can go ahead and apply for money right now and get money for either fixer uppers or money for down payment. So here we go. You need money to invest. I'm going to show you websites right here, right now that you can use to get it. I'm going to talk about the best investments that investors who want to lend to you are looking for. And I'm going to show you three strategies that you could use to get money for your investments without having to worry about making payments to the lender while you own the investment. So let's dive in. There's three types of loans that are the best for using private money and getting these real estate uh, investors involved in your deal. Number one is fix and flip loans. Fix and flip loans are where you borrow money to fix a property and then you sell it. These are the shows you see on TV where somebody goes and they buy a property, they fix it up and they sell it and they go our profit. You know what they don't show you on TV? Where the hell did they get the money and how did they do it? Okay. Well, here you are on my channel and I'm showing you, okay? So make sure you subscribe and like and comment and get alerts if you wanna watch and find out where to get the money. So fix and flip loans, one of the resources for that is Fund That Flip, F-U-N-D-T-H-A-T-F-L-I-P.com. Fundthatflip.com is a growing company that lends money to investors just like you who want to fund a property they want to fix up and flip. So that's an example of an internet place where you can get money. These loans are typically used just to fix properties and put them back on the market and get the money. Remember the 90 day rule. When you buy a property, typically you have to hold it 90 days before you get a new appraisal. A lot of people don't know that. You buy a property, you fix it up. Four weeks later, you put it on the market, you get an FHA or a VA, Federal Housing Authority or Veterans Administration loan they won't give you the new value. You're like, why didn't it sell? Why didn't it appraise? It didn't appraise because you have to wait 90 days for a new appraisal. If you don't know that, guess what? That's why you're watching me. Make sure you subscribe so you don't make those mistakes, okay? Because I learned that the hard way. I had a property, I was already, I was thinking I was getting my money, dead deal. Dead deal, why? Because I didn't know about the 90 day rule. So now you know. You don't have to lose 20, $30,000 finding out. That's why you subscribe. Home rehab loans are another great source of funding. Now, home rehab loans can be done where you take the investor and you give them a percentage of the deal. So I did a fourplex in Las Vegas and my private money lender, instead of me having to make payments as I went along, they actually deferred the payments and I paid it all in the end. So this was a beat up, boarded up fourplex. I completely remodeled it, okay? fixed it up, all right, and went ahead and sold it. The investor took a percentage of the profit and some of their preferred return on their money. At the end of the day, it was perfect for me because I had no income from coming in from this property. I was using my money to fix the property. Well, not my money, the money I borrowed from them, right? They were giving me draws. So as I fixed the property, they give me a little bit of money during each phase of fixing. So for example, when I did all the demolition, they gave me a couple grand to pay for demolition, they pay for flooring, they pay for cabinets. And as I phase through fixing the property, just like you phase through building a new home, same thing, right? As I went through the phases of finishing it, I got money all along the way, okay? So that's another way that you can get investors and money for real estate is you can joint venture the lender where they take a piece of the deal so you don't gotta come up with cash all the time. How do you like that one? You didn't even know about that, did you? That's why you gotta subscribe, my friend. Now, bridge loans are like a bridge, okay? I wanna get from here to over here and I don't wanna fall in the moat with the alligators, right? So a bridge loan is money that is used in order to get you to a particular place with a property. An example of a bridge loan is one that I'm working on right now. I'm buying a 50 unit building for seven and a half million in the San Francisco Bay Area. That building is in need of some work and the rents haven't been raised in three years. So instead of being behind the market like 
two or three or four or seven or eight percent, they're like hundreds of dollars behind, hundreds of dollars behind. So potentially 10 to 12,000 a month in rent they should be collecting, they're not collecting. Now California has rent control, so obviously you can't just raise all the rents at once like you can in some states, but by putting in the rent increase, I'll increase the value of that property anywhere from 700 to $900,000 in 30 days. So a bridge loan is money that I'm going to, going to have for 18 months. It's a shorter term loan. I'm going to pay a little higher interest, four and a quarter, four and a half, maybe five and a half. And I'm going to make interest only payments, which guess what? Are the same as if I got a regular loan paying principal and interest. So if I'm paying principal and interest, my payment's higher. If I'm just paying interest, even with a higher interest rate, the payment could be the same or lower. That allows me some relief on payments for the bridge, to cross the bridge, to where I get the income up to where it's supposed to be, up to market. And then I can get a takeout loan, it's called, or a long-term loan, you would think of it as, to where I'm gonna get a low interest rate, three and a quarter, three and a half, 3.75, depending on the market, and hold that property long-term. Does that make sense? So a bridge loan is basically a loan that you get to get you from one place to another with a property. On some of my other videos, I talked to you about you know, putting a group of people together. One of the ways that you can find money is a company called LendingClub.com. Lending Club helps people pool money together in order to invest and helps you to get money for investing and doing projects on real estate. So check them out, LendingClub.com. Look at some of the different things that they offer and see if it fits for your particular scenario and what you want to do. Prosper.com is a site that offers loans for consolidation of your debt or for home improvement projects or other projects. Prosper.com is a San Francisco Bay Area based company that does person to person lending. So people will be on the investment side and they will give money to Prosper. Prosper will do all of the paperwork and handle the servicing of the loan for you and you will get payments for the loans that you give to Prosper. In other words, you lend your money to Prosper and they lend it to someone else. When you put your money in the bank, the bank lends your money to somebody else, right? So this is you directly, you're lending to this platform called Prosper. Prosper will then lend out money on other loans based on credit criteria and all the criteria they use. You can read about it, but you can also borrow from Prosper, right? So you can invest or you can borrow, okay? I've been an investor. I've invested tens of thousands of dollars with Prosper. So you can borrow money in order to do home projects, roof repairs, other different things that you need to do, depending upon, of course, your credit and you know their whole criteria for lending and all that. So you could definitely look at that as a potential resource to borrow money. The other place that you can find private money lenders is you just really got to talk to people, okay? Uh, the title companies, they all know, all right? Because the private money lenders are funding deals, all right? So if you get in with these title companies and title officers, ask questions and listen, okay? They'll tell you, oh yeah, you know, this bank is doing a lot of stuff, this bank is doing stuff, this private money, that private money, and they'll give you the names of the companies and then you just call them and find out what they offer, right? It's almost like, um, say you're gonna get a cell phone service, right? You may call four or five different cell phone companies and see which one gives you the best rate, gives you the coverage, gives you what you want. It's the same with money, it's no different. It's no different. It's the same, okay? They all have different things they want to lend on. They all have different offers. They all have different things they do. They all have places they want to place money. They move in and out of markets. They want to do more single family homes. They want to do more multifamily. They want to do commercial. They change. They do different things, okay? And some banks just specialize in multifamily. That's all they do, okay? So again, you got to go out and you got to talk to people and you will find that in talking and listening, a lot of the people in and around the market of real estate will tell you who to borrow from, where you can get money, and those type of things. When you're looking for private money, one of the biggest mistakes a lot of investors make is they're interest rate sensitive. So they're like, I'm not paying 12%, I'm not paying 11%. Some of these loans you guys 
and gals want to borrow are 80, 90, 100 grand. I mean, come on, they're tiny little loans, okay? Across the country, there's a lot of property that you can buy pretty inexpensively and you could just borrow the money and you're worried about, well, I'm paying 12%. It's a $70,000 loan, who cares, okay? It doesn't matter, get the money. All right, and do the deal. Yeah, if, you're, if I'm doing a big deal and I'm paying a lot of interest, okay. But again, don't like cone on to, I'm not paying 7%, I could get six. You know, get the money, okay? You can't get the real estate without the money. Get the money. Have I paid high interest rates? Yes. Have I paid low interest rates? Yes. Okay, but they all averages out. Have I made millions? Yes. Why? Because I took the money, okay? And here's the other thing. If I didn't borrow the money, I wouldn't have got the property and I wouldn't have made the money, right? So if I'm sitting there jawing about this and that and complaining, you can negotiate a little bit, okay? But if you want the money, hey, they got to make money too. Everybody's got to make money. And lenders make money lending money. They charge points, they charge interest, they charge fees. That's how they make money. And it's a lot of work. So remember that, keep that in mind. And finally, associate with wealthy people. I went to lunch with some people that were in their 70s that have a lot of money. They understand real estate, they're in real estate, and their money's sitting in the bank getting a quarter point or or less in some cases. And a simple dinner, it cost me under $100, it was actually lunch, it got me $250,000 they lent me the next week. So take time to socialize. You know, I've often said some of the most, some of the biggest deals and most money I've made in real estate, it's just screwing off. Like hanging out with people, chit-chatting, talk to people, talk about real estate, get in the mix, hang out with people, go to lunch, propose deals, which is how to become a real estate investor even if you don't have good credit, okay? You've got bad credit, you've had a bankruptcy. It doesn't mean you can't get money. It just means you may pay a little more or you may have to do things a little bit different. So we're gonna talk about that in the next video. Subscribe, like, comment, I'll see you there.